What's up, YouTube? It's me, Raymx3, and I have another video that is gonna help you decide if you should pick up a game here in 2022. First video of the year. We're gonna start off with a banger of a game, Risk of Rain 2. So, I know what you're wondering. Should you play Risk of Rain 2 in 2022? Well, first, let me get into my history and my experience with roguelikes. Uh, news to me, I found out a day before making this video, Pokemon Mystery Dungeon is considered a roguelike, and that is my favorite game pretty much of my entire childhood. So, from a young age, I have loved roguelites. That being said, I've also played Moonlighter, and I hated it. So, do I like roguelikes? I don't know. Honestly, I don't know. But... What a roguelike is, is if you are curious, it's a type of game where you kind of just over and over and over do the same thing and you try to get to the end and every run is a little different. You might have randomly generated rooms or in the case of Risk of Rain 2, randomly generated items where you go and collect these items, you build your character and eventually you get to the end of the game or the level or you die with hopefully a super strong badass character. So here's how I got into Risk of Rain 2. On the internet, there's this website, a gem of a website called Reddit. I'm sure you've heard of it. Now inside Reddit, there's a subreddit called Nintendo Switch Deals. I'm sure you can see where this is going. I, I was just perusing Nintendo Switch Deals and turns out Risk of Rain 2 was on massive sale. It was like six bucks as opposed to the normal 25. So I was like, screw it. Sure, I've seen it everywhere. I've worked in retail, saw this game everywhere. I was like, I got, I got to try it. This seems like a really cool game. Downloaded it, had some Nintendo coins, ended up paying about $2. Great, perfect. I boot the game up. I'm sitting in bed. I'm quarantining, right? And uh, I'm like, it's time. I got to play this game. And I was totally, just totally surprised. I was so blown away. This game is so freaking fun instantly just choosing you start with two characters just choosing one of the two and just jumping into the phrase you can see like in the video here I ripped from my stream hey by the way I stream on twitch twitch.tv slash remix3 come hang out anyways I jump into the fray I have no idea what I'm doing I die cool that's cool that's my first run so I jump back in again I die and then I die about another like 10 times but every time I'm getting farther, every time it's clicking a little more. By the way, if you play this on uh, Switch, there's a gyroscope when you start. And, le and let me tell you, that gyroscope is an absolute bitch. Don't use it, turn it off, stick to your controllers. You know how it is. So, let me tell you, this gameplay is great. If you've been watching the video, and not just listening, you're actually seeing what the gameplay is like. In this very moment, I'm fighting this big robot. That there in the center that with the big horns, that's the teleport. You have to activate those once on every planet. Fight a boss, and you can get to the next stage. The character I'm playing as here, one of the starter characters, it's a homing arrow kind of archer type. I enjoy this character because I find it a little easier to play as when you have a stick. Um, you can jump all your attacks home in. That there is an item. You buy the chests, they cost money. You kill enemies, you get money. I pause the game, don't know why. You get the point though. The cycle, kill enemies, make money, get equipment, get stronger, kill more enemies, finally fight the boss, move to the next level, rinse, repeat. No run is ever the same though. Recently, one of my goals has been to, to get 10 crowbars because that's a, an achievement in the game and uh, it's just funny to have 10 crowbars and a crowbar deals extra damage to enemies above 90% health, stuff like that. Anyways, moving on to other things I like about this game. It's it's very, I don't wanna say it's very easy. This game is easy enough to learn. You can pick it up, you get the controls, although a little confusing for the first couple runs. Once they click, they click. And you know, they're not hard to learn and soon enough it's like butter under the fingers and it just works. But that being said, it's a hard, hard, hard game to master. Made it to the final boss multiple times. And the final stage, I should say, two multiple times. And I've just been absolutely one-shotted. Going from the stage before, blasting through it. Easy peasy, no worries at all. And then I get to the last stage, and I'm just one-shotted. It's, you need to know 
when you're okay to move on you need to know how to build your character you need to understand the character's strengths and weaknesses because in the game you can also give up the items which are in the top rectangle right in the center of the screen and you can trade them for other items so if you have an item that really doesn't work with the character no worries you can down the road maybe get rid of it and get something that will work i know that sounds like a lot of work just for a game but trust me it's so fun you'll be playing run after run after run and this will click again like butter so if you don't know me which you probably don't i have a music degree um so i'm always kind of hypercritical about the music in games is it, is it good as music standing alone is it good as music for the game does it fit the game does it flow well does it, the music transition well the composition all of it i'm happy to report this game has some of the best music i've ever experienced in a game it feels like you're in a space battle it feels like you're adventuring on a space planet it feels exactly what you should be hearing while playing this game it fits to the t i kid you not to the t i listen to i granted i've only had this game for a little while now but i listen to this soundtrack on my own when i'm not playing the game probably you don't know this either but you've been listening to the soundtrack too that's what the background music is is the game soundtrack so you get to be your own judge i guess i've included my favorite tracks but i think it's pretty damn cool and it definitely sucks you in i played this game with lo-fi music before i played this game with metal music and nothing compares to the original the soundtrack the original soundtrack it, it, it flawless absolutely flawless the composer's name is christian c something like that chris c do you ever see this buddy you're a genius i hope i'm half the musician you are by the time i die so other things that i really like about this game i kind of want to dive into the customization more again there's a whole wide varied kind of items in this game uh, but what what you're probably wondering is well what if you pick up the same item twice you know like i mentioned earlier i want to have 10 crowbars well lucky for you me and everyone else who wants to play this game is item stack meaning if you get more than one of an item its potency i guess you could say is increased so 10 crowbars you know, deal more damage to enemies above 90% health. That amount of damage you're doing to every enemy above 90% is more. You know, you might have an item that allows you to drop a health globe during uh, when you kill an enemy, a small chance. But if you rack up those items, you're gonna have a higher chance to drop globes. That being said, on the other hand, some items increase, like instead of increasing the chance to drop a globe, when the chances hit, you drop multiple globes. Some items also have individual triggers. For example, the health globe in that sense, instead of you know having one increased chance, you might have five separate chances so you can drop up to five globes per killed enemy. I've encountered all these. I'm sure people who are balls deep in this game for years have discovered all of this stuff and it's, it's definitely on the wiki i've looked uh but it's so so fun getting to a point in the game where you know you're powerful where you know you're strong where you know you can just absolutely decimate that being said how does this game compensate for you at becoming an absolute space destroyer god from hell well there's three difficulties that being said on top of that each level is harder that being said you level up per run with each level comes more enemies the later on enemies that are released from their cages so to speak when you're a higher level well they're just simply stronger there are three uh difficulties as i mentioned the first one which you've been watching here is the absolute easiest difficulty because i just had to look like a badass while you guys were watching this right i had to make it look like this was easy it's not you jump up to the second difficulty which is actually what the game is meant to be played on and you actually have to focus you have to pay attention to the enemies around you. You have to pay attention to what items you have, what items you may want to get rid of. You know, stuff like that. You really have to be completely invested in the idea of making your character better, making your character stronger. Um, so this game, and I'm, I, I'm, I'm looking here at my notes. The last point I have, I was playing last night and uh, my my favorite viewer of all time Brooke Marie shout out to her um we we play games together all the time you know me and my girlfriend she's like this game feels like 
this other game she couldn't put her word on it she was like describing like what the game was like everything anyways we came to the conclusion that it's here on the screen actually that's hilarious it looks like uh diablo and then a little later dauntless it's kind of like the art style of uh dauntless but a little more mature a little more i don't want to say edgy maybe a little less playful um and it really does have a diablo feel later on when you have walls of enemies just coming in trying to smack you trying to just ruin your day and it's just so fun man just walling through enemy after enemy after all that being said there is a bit more about this game i do want to cover that some people may be interested in there are a total of i'm pulling this from the top of my head eight nine ten different playable characters you have to go ahead and unlock the characters by doing certain missions by pulling off certain stunts or feats or tasks for example one of them is unlocked by doing the first teleporter event five times there's also a character that's unlocked by beating the game that being said, there's multiple endings to the game, so make sure you end the game correctly if you want to unlock the character. There's characters that are unlocked for a bunch of other things as well, and I'm going to leave that to you to go find it out. Beyond characters, there are also other unlockables in the game, like power-ups, and there's of course achievements. This game is just the more you play it, the more you unlock, the more you find out. Some things you'll unlock, like I said, achievements. Other things, maybe secret worlds you accidentally stumble upon. I won't go any further into it because I don't want to ruin your fun. But just know this game has a lot of secrets, and I'm convinced I haven't even scratched the surface of discovering them all. Which makes me excited. Because this is a game I want to play the hell out of. And thank god it ain't gonna get stale anytime soon. So, that really concludes all I want to talk about here. Risk of Rain 2, great game. Highly recommended if you're into any sort of kind of Diablo type enemy slaying game or you like roguelikes you know if you loved Hades maybe you'll love this game if you hate Moonlighter maybe you'll love this game that kind of stuff hey anyways I've been Ram X3 thank you so much for hanging out today and if you do pick up this game let me know if you love this game and already have it let me know if you hate it let me know too let's have a conversation let's talk about it Anyways, if you made it this far, thanks for hanging out, and I will see you on the next one. Bye.